So we've been discussing the, the story of Musa alayhi salam. Musa had presented his miracles to Fir'aun and Fir'aun basically accuses Musa of sorcery and he after witnessing the staff turn into a snake and after witnessing the shining hand of Musa Fir'aun decides to meet and have a meeting with his top officials and they basically say to him according to Surah Al-Shu'ara verse 36 قَالُوا أَرْجِهْ وَأَخَاهُ That leave him, don't do anything to him وَبْعَثْ فِي الْمَدَائِنِ حَاشِرِينَ We don't really know what type of power this man has for the time being, leave him, don't arrest him don't antagonize him, let him go back to the town of Goshen in that district where Bani Israel live and in the meantime, let us send emissaries to every corner of the Egyptian empire so they can summon for you the top magicians. Now this of course probably took several weeks or several months. And Musa is left, Harun is left, and during this period, it seems that Musa السلام, and Harun, they take advantage of this window of time and they preach. Now, when the, when the magicians arrive, they came to Fir'aun and they said that we want to meet Musa. If you want us to challenge him, we want to meet our opponent. So the magicians, and there were probably hundreds if not thousands of magicians that were summoned. And in fact, Musa السلام, has a meeting with Fir'aun about the logistics of this competition. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in Surah Taha verse 57, again, after several weeks, several months, Fir'aun summons Musa. Musa is hoping that maybe he had a change of heart. Maybe he thought about what he witnessed and realized that it's actually a mu'jizah, a miracle, and not sorcery. But unfortunately, Fir'aun says, قَالَ أَجِئْتَنَا لِتُخْرِجَنَا مِنْ أَرْضِنَا بِسِحْرِكَ يَا مُوسَى Verse 57 of Surah Taha tells us that he's still holding on to his position. Are you trying to expel us from our land with your sorcery, O Musa? فَلَنَأْتِيَنَّكَ بِسِحْرٍ مِثْلِ The next ayah, ayah 58. We will bring magic and sorcery that matches yours. فَجْعَلْ بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَكَ مَوْعِدًا You set an appointment. You decide when this challenge and this contest should take place. فَجْعَلْ بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَكَ مَوْعِدًا لَا نَخْلُفُهُ نَحْنُ وَلَا أَنْتْ Pick a time, pick a place, and we will not go back on it. We will stick to it. مَكَانٍ and سُوَى An appropriate time, an appropriate place. Verse 59, what does Musa suggest? قَالَ مَوْعِدُكُمْ يَوْمُ الزِّينَ Let us have the competition on the day of adornment. Musa chooses the most popular pagan festival where everyone descends upon Memphis, all of the people have gathered. And let everyone come together and meet in the morning. Meaning 9 a.m., 10 a.m. Now what's interesting here is look at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala works. So far in the story, who has seen the mu'jizah of Musa? Fir'aun and his inner circle. The majority of Egypt, the public, they have not seen it. Now Musa alayhi salam doesn't have a PR team. He doesn't have a marketing team. He doesn't have the resources to present this message to the public. 
who does it for him without even realizing it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, what does he say? You know the famous verse that we always read, وَمَكَرُوا وَمَكَرُوا اللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ خَيْرُ الْمَاكِرِينَ They plot, they scheme, and Allah plots and schemes, and Allah is the best of plotters. Now what does this mean? Typically when we read this verse, we think that, oh, it means that the evildoers, they have their plots, and Allah has His plan, and Allah cancels their plans. No. Allah is too great to do that. Allah will say, He's so powerful that He doesn't need to cancel your measly efforts. He will make your plan a part of His greater plan. Musa, he has this mu'jizah. But how is he going to reach the people? How is he going to present this mu'jizah to the masses? Fir'aun does it for him without even realizing it. Gathers all of the magicians. Who does all of the planning? Who is paying all of these people? It's coming out of Fir'aun's pocket. See, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes uses his enemies to propagate his message. So the magicians arrive. They arrive in Memphis. Not Memphis, Tennessee. Memphis, ancient Egypt. They arrive in Memphis. They say to Fir'aun, we want to meet this Musa that you speak of. You say that he's a skilled magician. We want to meet him. You know, magicians know magicians. We want to meet him. So the magicians go to the town of Goshen. They go to that Jewish district where Musa, every day, him and Harun, they're giving lectures, they're advising the people. The magicians go and they meet him. And they listen to his sermons. They listen to Harun and they quickly realize that this man is not a magician. We know magicians. We know our kind. You know, it's very similar to Abdullah ibn Salam, the famous Jewish rabbi in Medina, he heard about the Prophet and everyone is saying that he's a liar, he's this and that. Abdullah ibn Salam, he goes to the Prophet to meet him. The moment he sees the face of Rasulullah, he says, Wallah, ma hadha wajhu kathab. I swear by God, this is not a the face of a liar. This is a pure man, a holy man. So when the magicians meet Musa, they realize that we're not dealing with an ordinary person. This is not just a talented magician. So they go to Fir'aun. They tell Fir'aun that, listen, we think you're making a mistake. We know our craft. We know a magician when we see one. He's not a magician. So Fir'aun... He tells them that, listen, if he's not a magician and he's really a prophet, we will all believe him. And if he's not, if he's a false prophet, I will reward you. I will compensate you for being victorious. Now, after the magicians meet Musa, there is conflict amongst themselves. So they all come to Egypt thinking that, okay, we're going to defeat this new sorcerer. The Quran says, قَالَ لَهُمْ مُوسَى When Musa sees that the magicians are going to go forward and challenge him, verse 61 of Surah Taha, قَالَ لَهُمْ مُوسَى وَيْلَكُمْ Woe be unto you! لَا تَفْتَرُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ كَذِبًا Do not forge lies against Allah. فسي... فَيُسْحِتَكُمْ بِعَذَابٍ وَقَدْ خَابَ مِنْ افْتَرَى You know that this is not magic. Don't pretend as though I'm a sorcerer and you're just competing with another sorcerer. Verse 62, فَتَنَازَعُوا أَمْرَهُمْ بَيْنَهُمْ The magicians start to fight amongst themselves. Some of them are saying that no, we shouldn't challenge him. He's not a magician. Others say no. Let's challenge him. Let's compete. وَأَسَرُّ النَّجْوَى They privately discuss amongst each other what to do. Verse 63 
قالوا إن هذان لساحران يريدان أن يخرجاكم من أرضكم Some of the magicians are not budging. They're saying no. These are two sorcerers, Harun and Musa. They want to expel us from our land بسحرهما with their sorcery ويذهب بطريقتكم المثلى They're trying to change our way of life. They're trying to change our culture. Now, when Fir'aun sees that the hearts of the magicians are not united, some of them are weakened now, some of them are shaken, they don't have the same resolve, he reaffirms, he says, listen, challenge Musa. If he defeats you, we will all believe. I will believe with you. But if you defeat him, what does he say? So in Surah Al-A'raf, Surah 7, verse 113, وَجَاءَ السَّحَرَةُ فِرْعَوْنَ The magicians came to Musa. قَالُوا إِنَّ لَنَا لَأَجْرًا إِن كُنَّا نَحْنُ الْغَالِبِينَ If we win, what do we get? This is a very difficult task you've given us. If we defeat Musa, what is the reward? Verse 114, قَالَ نَعَمْ Yes, there will be a reward. وَإِنَّكُمْ لَمِنَ الْمُقَرَّبِينَ I will make you part of my inner circle. I'll bring you very close. Meaning, when you are among the muqarrabin, when you're part of Fir'aun's inner circle, are you treated like the gardener who gets paid for landscaping? No. Yeah, he pays others for what they do. But when you're part of his inner circle, he'll take care of everything for you. He'll give you a blank check, right? Whatever you need. You're part of the inner circle. I'm not compensating you for what you do anymore. I'm compensating you for who you are now. You're part of the inner circle. I'll provide safety, whatever you need. You will be among the muqarrabin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an, what does He say about Yawm Al-Qiyamah? There are three groups of people. Ashabu shimal the wicked people. Ashabu al-Yameen, the people of the right hand, the righteous. And there's a third group. وَالسَّابِقُونَ السَّابِقُونَ أُولَٰئِكَ الْمُقَرَّبُونَ What does it mean to be the Muqarrabun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's a beautiful hadith from Imam Al-Baqarah alayhi salam. Allahumma salli ala. The organizers are going to hate me tonight. They said 15 minutes. It's not going to happen. But that's, the, that's one of the benefits of being a shaykh. Technically, they really can't do anything. You know? <laughs> Unless you're that khoja center that's going to pull the mic. Then I don't know. But I have another mic here. So... صلوا على محمد وآل محمد إمام الباقر عليه السلام he says he relates a hadith قدسي he says Allah says ما يقرب إلي عبد من عبادي بشيء أحب إلي مما افترضت عليه there is nothing, Allah is saying in the Hadith Qudsi, there is nothing that my servant does that is more beloved to me than for him to do the wajibat. You know, sometimes we think that there is a secret. There is a secret that I have to figure out to get close to Allah. Just do your wajibat. Allah says, this is enough for me to love you. And then the hadith says, وَإِنَّهُ لَيَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ بِالنَّافِلَةِ There are some people, they really want to show their love for Allah. When you want to show your true love, you go above and beyond what is asked of you. That's a sign of love. I'm not going to do the bare minimum. I'm going to go the extra mile. I'm going to do the nawafil. And then Allah says, my servant does the recommended acts of worship Hatta uhibba until I fall in love with my abd. 
فَإِذَا أَحْبَبْتُ Now what happens when Allah loves you? Now I want you to think about that ayah with Fir'aun where he says to them, وَإِنَّكُمْ لَمِنَ الْمُقَرَّبِينَ I will make you part of my inner circle. You will be my right hand man, per se. That is if Fir'aun loves you. What happens if Allah loves you? The hadith says, when my abd does the wajibat and goes beyond the wajibat and does the nawafir, the mustahabbat, I will fall in love with him. And when I love my abd, when I love my servant, كُنْتُ سَمْعَهُ الَّذِي يَسْمَعُ بِهِ I become the hearing through which he hears. وَبَصَرَهُ الَّذِي يُبْصِرُ بِهِ And I become the sight through which he sees. وَلِسَانَهُ الَّذِي يَنْطِقُ بِهِ I become the speech that he utters. وَيَدَهُ الَّتِي يَبْطِشُ بِهِ I become the hand that he uses to strike. I don't think you understood how profound that statement was. When you become close to Fir'aun, he says, you will become my right hand. Allah is saying, when you become close to me, I will be your right hand. Meaning what? Allah says, even though I'm your master, I will treat you as if you are my master and I am at your service. This is what it means to be among the muqarrabeen. Now we go back to the story. They come on the day of adornment. Verse 65 of Surah Taha, Surah 20, verse 65. So imagine the scene. Musa and Harun are standing on one side, hundreds or thousands of sorcerers standing on the other. And the entire population of Egypt, they're all watching. قَالُوا يَا مُوسَى إِمَّا أَن تُلْقِيَا وَإِمَّا أَن نَكُونَ أَوَّلَ مَنْ أَلْقَى The magicians say what? O oh Musa, either you cast down what you have or we will be the first ones to cast down. This was actually a very kind gesture on their part. They basically said what? Oh Musa, you decide. Do you want to start or do you want us to start? Here, they showed a little bit of respect to a prophet of God. Because when you let your opponent decide whether he's going to start first or not, you're giving them leverage. You're giving them an advantage. They show this adab with Musa. It's probably because of this that Allah gave them the tawfiq of hidayah. If you show adab with my messengers, I will take you out of the darkness and put you into the light. A similar example is with Hur ibn Yazid al-Riyahi. There were many people on the other side. Why Hur? Why was Hur given the tawfiq of hidayah? One reason could be that when his forces arrived to prevent Imam al-Hussein from entering Kufa, it was the time of Salah. Now, are they going to have two separate jama'ahs? You know, after all, these are... They're fighting each other. They're not on the same side. Imam al-Hussein, alayhi salam, he looks at Hur. He says, Hur, it's the time of prayer. Do you want to lead your men in prayer or do you want to join us? He says, I want to pray behind you, Ya Aba Abdullah. That moment of akhlaq and adab, Allah guided him. So, Musa alayhi salam, in response, verse 66, قَالَ بَلْ أَلْقُوا He says, you guys cast first, you go first. فَإِذَا حِبَالُهُمْ وَعَصِيُّهُمْ وَعِصِيُّهُمْ يُخَيَّلُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ سِحْرِهِمْ أَنَّهَا تَسْعَى The magicians, they covered their ropes with mercury. 
When it's hot outside, when mercury is heated, it creates the illusion of movement. So all of these sorcerers, they cast down their ropes and it appeared to be a valley full of snakes. Even to Musa it looked real. And this is why in verse 67, فَأَوْجَسَ فِي نَفْسِهِ خِيفَةً مُوسَى Musa felt a little bit of fear in his heart. Now this was not, why was he afraid? He was afraid that the magic will influence the people. He was concerned about the guidance of the people. He didn't want people to be misled. And this is where Allah calms the heart of Musa. Verse 68, قُلْنَا لَا تَخَفْ O oh Musa, don't be afraid. إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْأَعْلَى You will be superior. Verse 69, وَأَلْقِ مَا فِي يَمِينِكَ O oh Musa, throw down what is in your right hand. تَلْقَفْ مَا صَنَعُوا Musa throws down his staff. It turns into a serpent. But this time it does something extra. It swallows all of the ropes. People are flabbergasted. They're shocked. In fact, that scene, imagine, you see the magicians know magic. When they saw Musa's staff turn into a serpent and it gobbled all of these imaginary snakes in the valley, immediately all of the magicians went down into sujood. Verse 70, فَأُلْقِيَ السَّحَارَةُ سُجَّدًا They all went down into sujood. Even the ones who were initially unsure, they were all convinced when they saw this. Meaning that this shows you that they had visited the town of Goshen many times. They had heard the message and this was the final sign that they needed. We believe in the Lord of Harun and Musa. Now you can imagine Fir'aun at this moment. Fir'aun in verse 71 of Surah Taha, it was embarrassing for him, he was humiliated. He summons them. And the magicians up until now, they think they're safe. Because the agreement that Fir'aun had with them is that if Musa defeats us, we will all become mu'mineen. If you win, I'll pay you. Musa won. So they all go into the palace to meet Fir'aun. And he says, قَالَ آمَنْتُمْ لَهُ قَبْلَ أَنْ آذَنَ لَكُمْ You believed in Musa without first getting permission from me? Look at the arrogance. And this is where you see his paranoia come out. إِنَّهُ لَكَبِيرُكُمُ الَّذِي عَلَّمَكُمُ السِّحْرِ Musa was the one who taught you magic. This was all a plot to humiliate me. You were all colluding with each other. So he starts to accuse them of committing treason that you guys plotted against me. فَلَا أُقَطِّعَنَّ أَيْدِيَكُمْ وَأَرْجُلَكُمْ مِنْ خِلَافِ I'm going to cut off your limbs your right hand and your left leg and I'm going to crucify you on the trunks of palm trees. And I will show you who his punishment is more severe and who has the ability to endure. That's a threat. He's threatening to not just kill them, torture them. You know, it's one thing if someone says, I'll put a bullet in your head. You're like, khalas, it's going to be a quick one. But to be mutilated, that's not easy. There was, a, do you guys mind if I share a, a funny joke? Okay. Got to keep it light. It's Saturday night. All the brothers, for sure they're not going to invite me anymore. They're like, he's, he's adding stuff to the lecture now. We have time? Okay, we have time. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa You just went from the most hated person to the most loved person. Alhamdulillah. I was just joking. So speaking of torture, you know, sometimes we think 
we are more resilient than we really are. You know, I had a friend who was like hardcore Shi'i. Like, Ya Laytana Kunna Ma'akum, I will go through any hardship for the love of Ahlul Bayt. Even if they cut me up into pieces, I'm ready for it. So I said, MashaAllah, that's great. I don't mean, you have more confidence than me. So a few weeks, few months passed by, and I saw him at a dinner, and he looked like he saw a ghost. I'm like, what happened? What's wrong? And he said, I had a dream. I'm like, what was the dream? He said, I was in Iraq. In my dream, I was doing ziyara, and I went to Samarra, and I got captured by ISIS. So he's like, I got captured by this guy who basically was going to kill me because I'm Shi'i. So he's like, in the dream, I kept on telling myself, you know, I got this, I got this, it's okay. It's just like, now it's your time. Now is your time to shine. So he's like, in the dream, the moment he walked into the room, He's like, before he entered, I was telling myself, I'm ready to give my neck. He's like, in the dream, he walked in the room and he pulled out a huge dagger. And I'm like, come on, man, let's talk about this. So the point is that when it comes to torture, some of us are not able to go through that type of pain. We'll say whatever needs to be said to save ourselves. So here, Fir'aun is threatening to crucify them. And Fir'aun is not one to bluff. Because he has a track record of slaughtering people. Verse 72, the response of the magicians. قَالُوا لَن نُؤْثِرَكَ عَلَى مَا جَاءَنَا مِنَ الْبَيِّنَاتِ We will never prefer you over the clear proof that we just saw. وَالَّذِي فَطَرَنَا And we will never prefer you over the one who originated us. Do whatever you want to do. This world is going to end. If we're not crucified today, we'll die in our beds many years from now. Eventually we're going to die. Might as well die with the crown of martyrdom. And then they say, verse 73, Inna amanna birabbina. We believe in our Lord, لِيَغْفِرَ لَنَا خَطَايَانَ We have hope that Allah will forgive us for our sins. وَمَا أَكْرَهْتَنَا عَلَيْهِ And we ask Allah to forgive us for what you forced us to do, O Fir'aun. Fir'aun forced them. They didn't want to challenge Musa. وَمَا أَكْرَهْتَنَا عَلَيْهِ مِنَ السِّحْرِ وَاللَّهُ خَيْرٌ وَأَبْقَى And Allah is the, the greatest. He's the most good, the most enduring. And I'll conclude with this, my dear brothers and sisters. The story of the magicians is an important lesson because it teaches us to never think that we are better than others. If we were there on that day, on the day of adornment, and we were watching that match between Musa and the magicians, we probably would have sent our la'na upon the magicians and these people are the worst of the worst. They are the people of Jahannam. They are the enemies of God. But if we waited to see how their journey in this life ends. There are many people. You see them as sinners today. But this is only one small chapter in the book of their lives. The magicians of Musa, when they met him, they were kuffar. They were magicians. All of their income was haram. They were working for the greatest tyrant. They go from that to believing in Musa. So they go from kuffar to mu'mineen, from mu'mineen to shuhada. They go from believers to martyrs. So never think that you're superior to anybody. Because there are many examples of saints 
who slip in their final hour and they die as sinners. And there are sinners who see the light in their last moments and they die as saints. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطاهرين.